Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, broadcasting on the DVC to all points unknown. If you're within the sound of my voice, you're listening to Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. Hello and welcome home. Thank you for joining us on episode 247 of Welcome Home, a Disney Parks and Vacation Club podcast. I'm Tom I'm here with Trevor. Uh, you know, Happy New Year, first of all, to everybody. Yeah. Right. So happy we've New been, Year. yeah, we, we were just uh, chatting and catching up. I know we've been gone for a couple of weeks. So, um, uh, you know, hopefully some people out there missed us a little bit, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know hopefully everybody had happy holidays we just wanted to uh take a little break uh at the end of the year there and uh enjoy some time with our families and um you know that kind of thing so i i, I don't know how your holidays were trevor uh but yeah I'm, I'm i'm pretty well rested it was it was a good holiday we didn't uh we didn't do too much so it was it was good uh how about you it was good. Uh, so I, I, you know, and you, we were chatting before the show, but I, I didn't mention this to you. So, um, <laughs> the, <laughs> I, I've had family here nonstop basically for for three weeks now, uh, which is fine. Uh, yeah. it, it's funny when you watch like uh, you know one of our favorite uh, movies to watch during the holidays is uh, is Christmas Vacation, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, if you watch Christmas Vacation, you know, in the beginning of it, they they show like the little advent calendar and like. Basically, like the family shows up like several weeks before Christmas, like the, the yeah. family is there for weeks. Right. And that's kind of what it's felt like. I've had family here for for weeks. But um, right before the Friday before Christmas, my daughter got strep. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. So <laughs> I, you know, I and listen, a lot of people are sick right now. It's it's it's, uh, you know, it's that time of year. Um, but you know, it's, it's funny. Cause I was, I was talking about this with my, my wife thinks this is, is weird, but when she took her to the doctor and it came back with strep, I was actually kind of excited. And I'll tell you why for just, you know, hold off your <laughs> outrage for a moment. Um, you know, all the other things that are going around, it's basically just like, you have to let it run its course strep. You can treat, you know, like we, we gave her uh, antibiotics and she was good in two days. She was good by Christmas, you know? So right. it was, yeah. it, so I was actually kind of pumped. It was strep. Cause it was like, this is great. We can, we can fix this. <laughs> Whereas, you know, anything else, they would just been like, Oh, you got to let it, let it ride. Um, yeah, so you know, uh, and and I think all the parents out there know, and and I mean, even if you're not a parent, you probably know that strep is highly transmissible. So uh, a couple other people in the house got strep too, um, but you know, I, I also may have been patient zero on this. If everybody remembers from a couple weeks ago, um, <laughs> at the last yes. episode where I had no voice, uh, I I might have had strep and just not known it, and then given it to my daughter. Um, that is certainly a possibility. So. <laughs> gotta love the holidays it's uh (laughs) it's always like yeah it's it's a magical time of the year (laughs) yeah it's a magical time of the year yeah that's that's one way to describe it yeah yeah um no we we listen no we we had a good time with family i'm not i'm not complaining uh you know the, the the holidays were very magical my daughter got a uh barbie dream house that is literally three feet tall and four feet wide it is the most absurd thing i've ever seen as far as a toy goes, it's gigantic. It's gigantic. It takes up like half my living room. Um, and I, you know, of course I was putting that together uh, the other night. So that was, that was fun. I, I like putting stuff, like putting toys together. So I shouldn't have complained, but the, this thing is gigantic. I mean, it's taller than my daughter. It's literally taller than my daughter. So, <laughs> so is it like, is it like a doll playhouse or is it like, yeah. a play, like a full, it, like it, so it's, playhouse. It's, <laughs> it's a Barbie dream house. It's got uh, a water slide that goes into a pool. It's got an elevator on the side of it. It's got three floors. Um, it's got a closet that where she can hang the Barbie's clothes in. It's got several beds. It's got a couch that turns into a bunk bed. Like it's, it's got a full working kitchen, you know, with like uh, the stove makes sounds. The toilet flushes for some reason. <laughs> you know, it's just wow. It's, <laughs> it's it's i mean listen it's it's quite the barbie dream house i i have to say um so yeah it's my daughter's very happy she's been very much enjoying playing with the barbie dream house so which i'm sure was a hot thing this year with the barbie movie being so big and everything not that my daughter saw it but you know yeah like, barbie I, I just see... kind of in the in the in the ether you know <laughs> yeah, yeah there's a resurgence of barbie because of the movie yeah, makes exactly. sense. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, no, holidays were good, though. Uh, you know, and I, I, I've been laughing, too. You know, it's just as I got older, it just I mean, I don't know if you guys stayed up for New Year's Eve, but we didn't stay up for New Year's Eve. Like we were in bed by 10. <laughs> like, we did. <laughs> we did because we actually are. So 
Well, you have a teenage um, son though too. That's yeah. different, right? So yeah, yeah. Our, our son's a teenager, and we actually we we had our own little New Year's party the, with the three of us, which um, was it, it was nice because yeah, he he's kind of at an age where um, you know it's it, <laughs> in the past he has stayed up for New Year's, but it was like us pushing him to stay up. But now yeah, yeah. now we now he's at an age where like there there's been a couple of nights while we've been off here where um, like you know he's up at like. 1 30 in the morning and i'm like okay you have to go to bed because <laughs> you know you know i don't need to be woken up at three o'clock in the morning when you're actually coming to bed <laughs> well so, and you know yeah. it's 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 funny you say that like the reason why i was in bed by 10 o'clock is my daughter wakes up at 6 30 in the morning regardless of anything happening right like we could keep her right. up to midnight and she's gonna wake up at 6 30 in the morning right and and you know so once she gets to that age i could see myself becoming a night owl again where i can actually you know i, I will stay up late for things but now it's like it's just so hard to stay up late and then be woken up at six thirty in the morning. I am not a morning person either, so like it's if I get yeah. not enough sleep, I'm just it's going to take me a good fifteen minutes to get going. And, and my daughter is just like, "Hey, let's go right now!" Like literally this morning, I woke up at six thirty, of course, and I got downstairs, and she had just gotten some new Barbies that I hadn't opened yet. And the second I got downstairs, she's like, "Daddy, open the Barbies," and I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, I've just woke up, man. Like, <laughs> can you give me like a little bit of time? There's so much packaging on this. It's a pain in the butt to get these things out. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I will say, you know, enjoy it for as much as. Yeah, I know, <laughs> as I know, I know, I know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I it, it does change quickly before you realize it. And, you know, it's funny. You, you, I'm, I was the same as you, as you know, you know, our son would get up at a certain time. And I was before we had him, I was a night owl. Yeah. And now I've gone back to being, I, I'm not up as late as I used to be, like when I was in my 20s, because I, I was, you know, one of those people that was up till 1am, like every night. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it, you know, I've kind of gone back to that where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm not so worried about when I go to bed, I'm, I'm more concerned about when my kid goes to bed, because yeah. the, on the flip side now is that like, when he goes back to school, I have to be the one making sure he's getting up for school because, um, you know, teenagers sleep until noon if you don't disturb them. Right. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, no, listen, that was, that was yeah. me. I, that was me written all over. I mean, I used to go to bed at three o'clock in the morning and sleep till three in the afternoon. Like it's, you know, that was what I used to do. Um, so yeah, no, I, it's just, it's just a whole different thing now. I mean, you know, like you said, once my daughter gets to be teenage years, I'll probably stay up again. But right now it's like, it's just not, I, I need sleep. <laughs> you know, yep. I need to get some sleep every once in a while. So it's totally fair. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, what, let's. Yeah. Uh, All right. There let's... was actually a fair amount of Disney stuff that happened over the last two weeks here. Three weeks, yeah. Let, let's uh, uh, let's get into this. I, I think we're going to start with the Fort Wilderness DVC cabins, right? Yeah. And I I know we've been talking a lot about these, but listen, we we don't mm -hmm. often have a lot of DVC news, and I feel like we we need to delve into these. And there's some interesting things going on here, right? This one's very different. Like there there's a lot of there's a lot of different things going on with the Fort Wilderness cabins and a lot of new stuff yeah. that we've never seen in DVC before. So yeah, it's, it's definitely worth talking about more than, than we have other uh, properties that have come up. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, so we've gotten uh, some documents filed, right? So now we, we know that the, um, we know that the contracts are going to go till 2075, uh, which makes sense. 50 year contract, yep. same, same deal as everywhere else. Um, the interesting thing here is, you know, first of all, this is going to be the first pet friendly resort. Um, they have already put it out there that there's only two dogs per cabin allowed and the dogs must be fully trained uh, and not allowed on furniture, which I don't know how they could possibly, uh, you know, enforce that. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I guess maybe the thinking is, is that, you know, y your dog has to be, I would assume, crate trained because I guess so. Yeah. Cause like, so, so I, I, I'm sure you're the same way I am. Like, you know, my dog sleeps on, or he goes between our bed and my son's bed. Like we don't, oh, we don't see, have, my dog does not sleep in our beds. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so it's, again, it's, you know, it's great. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. well, everybody's different, right? And, yeah, yeah, and exactly. you know, for us, it was, you know, you know, this would never work because we're fine with our dog sleeping at the foot of our bed. He's also a tiny dog too. Like it's, yeah. it's not like he's taking up a ton of space. And a lot of people do, you know, let dogs sleep on their beds and stuff. And I can understand why Disney would not want to deal with that because, you know, you don't know who's or, or you know, they, they want to be clear about the, you know, the dog stays off the furniture because, you know, if somebody's dog messes up 
the furniture and then the next person comes in and it, it just becomes a cascading thing where it does. the furniture is going to get destroyed way faster than normal. But that's not to say that, you know, people don't wreck the furniture either. Like, I mean, like yeah, yeah, people just people do a good job yeah. of that themselves without the dogs, too. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was interesting. A couple of things on here that, that they're saying you cannot leave the dog unattended for more than seven hours. Again, how are they going to enforce that? Um, but also the dogs, guess what dogs must contact housekeeping to schedule a room cleaning time when the animals won't be there. And there's going to be dog door hangers on the doors to, to, uh, mark the cabins that do have dogs. And, uh, also they have this line. Yeah. Which is fair. Yeah. I mean, especially for like housekeeping and stuff like that. And they also meant, they also mentioned here two dogs cannot disrupt the quiet enjoyment of other guests. If management company in its discretion determines that a dog's behavior is objectionable to other guests or creates a disturbance, uh, they must immediately remove the dog from the resort property and arrange for the dog to be housed outside. Now we kind of read that before because that's like the existing dog policy at, mm-hmm. at dog friendly places. So they're just really adopting the overall policy there. Um, there's also going to be to a thirty dollar per night uh, for owners, um, and this this is interesting too. Fifty dollars per night for lessees, guests, invitees, licensees, and exchangers. I don't know what that exactly means. <laughs> that, that means anybody that so so if is you're that a the renter? owner, are we talking renters? Yeah, like, yeah, that's exactly it. If if you're if you're the owner of the contract, they charge you thirty. But if you're anybody else that's not the owner of the contract, they're going to charge you fifty. How are they going to police that though? Too like I, I hmm. because I, mean, I, get, well, I, I guess you'll see when the you, guest name you do doesn't a booking, match up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but. yeah, because you know, you know whose whose um, contracts belong to who. Like we, that's true. we know that it's the same way that they know eleven month versus seven month. Yeah, right? exactly. That's true. Yeah. The the other interesting thing here, and this is from DVC News, and this is this is a little bit of speculation, right? So this is not like official, right? Yeah, but. They're doing the math on this uh, over at DVC News, and and they found, based on the filings, that the amount of points that are going to represent a single cabin is expected to be 7,661. And so this will make the cabins cheaper than pretty much every existing one bedroom at Disney World, including uh, value rooms at uh, Disney's Animal Kingdom. Uh, it is, it's also going to be cheaper than uh, deluxe, some of the deluxe studios at, at Riviera, Bay Lake, at uh, Poly, at Grand Floridian. Um, this is these rooms are going to mm. end up being cheaper, which is is interesting because we kind of talked about this. A lot of people were kind of out on this because of how small these rooms are and the, and the setup of them. But if it's cheaper than a studio, this is going to become a, at certain places. It's going to become a pretty attractive option for a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, that that's going to kind of put it in the same place, I think, as, you know, an old Key West or Saratoga that, yeah. you know, it, if if you're not so concerned about your accommodations or, or not, sorry, not to say you're not concerned about your accommodations, but you're, you know, yeah, you, you're you're wanting to get the most bang for your buck out of your points. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people will concede what they're wanting in a room. You know, because, again, we talked about, you know, like the bunk beds in the room and stuff, you know, people may yeah, look and go, yeah. yeah, OK, I can deal with that. You know, if it means that they can, you know, squeeze more days out of their contract. Absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. I, I think this is the fact and I'm not actually surprised by this. I kind of had a feeling they were going to price them this week. And listen, we don't really know what the per night's going to be. Right. We just know what the total points per unit's going to be. But that kind of informs on what it's going to look like. Right. And and so DVC, uh, DVC News even mentions that. Um, the cabins per unit total of 7661 is comparable to the deluxe studios at Grand Floridian, which are 7627. So it very they're very similar uh, there. So it, it's going to be probably around those uh, rates per night. Um, they also mention here, too, that that the, D- the DVC could create multiple uh, room categories, which I, I do believe they're going to do. I think we, we said that, Trevor, that we think they're going to yeah. do like a preferred kind of like they do at Saratoga, where there's the preferred and then there's the standard, because there are some of these cabins that are going to be closer to the water and closer to amenities and closer to transportation. So you, you could see them uh, you know, upping the it, it, having a premium category for the, these cabins. Those ones would probably be exorbitant in cost, or that you think I so? think that will. Yeah, I, I mean, I I kind of look at it. Um, the like at at the poly, they they kind of do something similar with the lake view versus yeah, the, the standard view, yeah. view. Is that the lake view is definitely like it's it's the same thing, but you're really just paying for the view, and a lot of people that's hard to justify. 
And well, yeah, I can see I can see this being the same thing as that. That would be the breaking point where people would be like, I'm not going to pay for a preferred view here, even though it's the same cabin in the same location and all that or not same location, but, you know, you know, a little bit closer. But I can see that, you know, that won't be it, it's a weird breaking point, right? Like it's, yeah. you know, you know, that it, it's weird how people's minds will kind of, you know, look at these things and go, but, you know, they're close enough, but as soon as you pass a certain point threshold, I think people will be like, you know, there's no way that that the preferred room is worth it, right? Well, <laughs> yeah, see, I, I kind of look at it that they're going to do it more because like, I, I don't think it's going to give you a specific view, right? Like, I feel like views are more mm. of a premium than so I, I feel like it's more location based. And so I'm looking at it more like similar to Saratoga, where they have the premium and standard and it's really just location. It's not like view or anything. And it's really only a couple point difference. But at the same time, it's like a very... I don't want to say it's an ambiguous benefit. You know, it's, it's, it's just like a, it's, it's a kind of, like you said, it's like, do you need to have the view of the lake? Eh, maybe. Is it nicer to be closer to the amenities? Sure. Is it worth three extra points per night? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> like, it just yeah. depends. You know, it depends on what you, what you're, you said, there's like the, a threshold there. Right. And I don't, I don't know what that threshold is, but I think it's different for every person. Right. So uh, and, and I also think it's different in every situation to your point, Trevor, right? Like there's a pretty big difference between a standard view room at animal kingdom and a Savannah view room. But, f- and I've said this many times in the show and I'll always say this, if you're going to stay at animal kingdom, you got to have the Savannah view room. So for me, that pr- that's a premium I'm always willing to pay. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. It's again, every, every property you're right. It, it does have a different threshold and a different you know a different reasons why or why not on the premium yeah yeah and i guess i guess the the thing about this one is that like you said i i feel like the the entire uh, um attraction of higher priced rooms will be you're closer to the boat launch for magic kingdom yeah and i and i think that'll be like really like you're you're talking you know walking down the road versus you know, walking out of your room onto the boat dock. Like exactly. Yeah. I, yeah, I, no, I, I, I feel like, I, I feel like it right. won't be enough, but, but again, that's just my personal view is I don't, I don't see where the premium on this is enticing, but it just depends on, it just depends on how much of a premium they really put on it. And and if they do it at all, we don't even know if they're really going to do it. They, they may I, or may not. I, I'm, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, like, I'm 90% sure they're going to do it because yeah, I, I, they have those couple of rooms that are just they're so much closer than everything else that they, they've they allocated. Like, yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I totally agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. So. All right. So we don't necessarily have to talk about uh, the Fort Wilderness stuff anymore because we have something well, else going on here. So well, go ahead. So but before so. Do you want I to think talk about we the should, trust thing before we do. Yeah, that I think we should talk okay. about the trust next because that does actually. I, I saw that it, um, they are going to be rolling the Fort Wilderness um, into the trust. So possibly, right? We this is yeah, still all kind of speculation. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's so so yeah, it's it's rumored, but um, so so what it is is uh, DVC. It, they're, they're trying a new product, which is uh, a timeshare trust, and. I've been trying to understand this, but the problem is I don't have a good point of reference on this because I don't look at a lot of other timeshares. So, so um, the way I, think I understand, I think I got it. So go, go. Yeah. Okay. So, so the way I understand it is that the trust, in, instead of having like right now, we have our, um, our individual um, resorts that we buy into. Um, the idea is, is that when you buy into the trust, it it's kind of, it's, I feel like it's kind of future proofing, the DVC buy-in for people in that they'll get access to whatever is in the trust. So yeah, instead so of just Fort Wilderness, it'll be, yeah, yeah, it'll be like Fort Wilderness and you know, whatever new ones come up, but that does, that doesn't mean that they're going to roll in the old ones at any point. So um, I, I feel like it, it might be a bit of a gamble that, you know, if, if you buy into a trust, it's like you're or in this particular case, because the only thing we know so far is, you know, Fort Wilderness is the new upcoming place. It's like, well, what else is like, is it going to be worthwhile to buy into this trust? Right. Like, I, I guess that's what I've gotten out of it is that it's like, they're kind of offering this as like, Hey, this will, this could be a good thing, but we really don't know what, what it's going to do. Right. Like that. No, yeah. We, that's we what we I'm haven't struggling announced with. Details yet. Yeah. They yeah. haven't announced details yet. And, and I mean, 
based on what DVC News is speculating on here is that they think it'll it'll still stay kind of in the in the same framework as far as like you'll still be able to book resorts outside the trust, right? But they're mm-hmm. looking at this as like a way to uh, potentially finally sell off some of those resorts that are harder to sell. And, you know, the prime example of that is Alani. We've joked on the show many times that Alani will never never sell out. If they put Alani under the trust, I mean, it, that that's a way for them to make it easier to sell Alani, right? Because they can say, hey, you buy into the trust, maybe for a small premium, Right. And you uh, now have a home resort of Alani. You have a home resort of Fort Wilderness. You have Riviera because Riviera is, you know, selling kind of slow, too, because of the resale restrictions. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. they can they can do that. Right. Like where they could have a, a, a variety of resorts. Now, I think it would be interesting, Trevor, if they almost did it where they. Almost like they they have it now with the the and I don't know if they're going to do this. So this is all pure speculation. So please just take everything yeah, we're saying. Yeah, we're, he's yeah, not we're, announcing. We're not we're not saying we know for sure how this is going. No, no. Work, so we have no inside information about this at all. But I would think it would be interesting if they almost did it like the categories like they have now, right? Where if what if DVC had like a trust product that was value DVC. And then like um, you you might maybe don't even do moderate, right? Like maybe you just have like a value slash moderate DVC trust that has, you know, like Fort Wilderness in it and then maybe some other value type resorts they end up building. And then you have a deluxe trust where you have some of the the higher end ones that they put. And, you know, there's a premium, obviously, on the deluxe versus the value. I, I don't know if that's possible or if they would do something like that. But it's kind of I to me, it's an interesting idea. Like it's it's a way that you can do the different levels that they have in the current hotels with DVC. Now, given the reason why most people buy into DVC is, you know, to stay at those deluxe resorts, right? <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, that's that's the reason why. But I'm sure there's also some people that would like to get in at a lower price point that would be fine staying at, you know, a Fort Wilderness or staying at, you know, even even like a you know one of the one of the value resorts that Disney has now, right? So, like if if they were to build a DVC like that, I mean, I I think they're trying to. In a way, I, I I think they can use this to open this up to more than just people that have the money to to do this. You know what I mean? Like, because right now, I, and somebody wrote it wrote us wrote us this right that they thought that like basically only rich people could have DVC, right? Which is not really true, but you do. It is a it is an investment, right? It's a lot of money, and not yeah. everybody has that money to put out, right? And so, but there are probably some people that want to take advantage of would like to be part of DVC that can't afford it now, and maybe DVC is just trying to expand their expand their targeted customer uh, you know their targeted audience right and and may and i don't know if they're going to make it more affordable with this trust the trust probably going to have a premium on it i'm just saying you could make it so that you know you have a a, a lower end resort piece that you know where maybe you could buy in at a little bit of a lower price but i, I don't know again this is all speculation we have no idea what's going to happen this is literally just from some filings that they they put out there so yeah and and you know the the more that i think about like, like you were saying you know the the thing is is that we have the, the the existing resorts we have fort wilderness we have alani and all that and, and i can see where you know the, the, it's i i'm leaning towards you know fort wilderness is probably going to be the pilot for this yeah, yeah i agree and that but then um i also i can't remember if i saw this confirmed or not but it sounds like fort wilderness is going to have the same resale restrictions as riviera yeah. it seems like that's just a going forward thing that you know you're not gonna you're not gonna have um you know any more you know being able to resale the way that the current dvc yeah, it, it's actually in our first do. it's it's yeah. in the first uh section there so yeah okay it, all right they, yeah they included I mean, it in the filings that they did yeah so, so it, there, there is a lot of information i can't remember what i read that was rumored <laughs> what was, what was yeah no no rumor. yeah no so they it is in the but, filing that that they yeah. will still have the same resale restrictions uh if you it's, buy a contract there off of the resale market you will only be able to use those points at the cabins right so so here here's the interesting thing is that if if it is a trust and you you know you're buying in and you're buying into the trust for the for the um resale restrictions that may actually work out to people that are looking at resale that you know if they have a limited selection of resorts that they can pick from under under a resale contract mm. that may make the trust more attractive to you know for people buying in you know you know firsthand and resale but then I also started thinking about it, and, and this is kind of um, – this is the other side of this that I'm wondering how this is going to play out is that, you know, right now we have – you know, every resort has 
you have your home resort, right? You know, yeah. you know, you buy into your home resort, you get the the eleven month window at your home resort, and the and the whole point of that is that you're not fighting with um, other people to get to your resort, right? You, you, exactly. It gives you a yeah. priority at your resort, but if they have this trust and you start having multiple resorts, there's going to there's a it's not that it's going to happen, but there is a potential there that you'll have a resort that becomes the priority resort or that becomes the popular one. And then it turns into um, basically you can never get into inside of the trust. It's like you, you can never get into the resort that everybody wants to get into. Yeah. And that actually brings down the value of the trust because then people are dissatisfied because they're, there's more people fighting for the same thing, right? And well, and the and the problem with that is that it it it's not that that comes up right away. Like you could buy in now with Fort Wilderness and be like, oh, this is great. You know, I stay at Fort Wilderness. You know, whatever. But then they add in, you know, let's say five more resorts over the next you know five or ten years, and all of a sudden you can't get anything at um, at Fort Wilderness because all these other resorts have come in, and there's so many people vying for the same property now. Right. But you don't see that until later. Yeah. But you could also, you could have the opposite <laughs> view of it though, too, right? Where it would spread out the, if you, if you're in the trust and let's say there's five res- resorts in the trust, maybe it would spread out that home priority between those five resorts. But you're probably right. You, you could have one favorite one in there that would get used more often than the others. Right. Yeah. Or, or again, and it may come down to a, you know, a personal thing is that, you know, if you happen to pick or, you know, if there's a resort that you like in the trust, but, you know, you're never, able to get a booking for it or, or, you know, or there's too many people that like that resort. Right. Yeah. Like you said, you're, you're right. You know, the idea is, is that the averages, you know, people will kind of spread out and you'll, there should always be options, but having the trust there actually takes away, you know, the whole home resort thing is a restriction that actually helps keep the, you know, our DVC contracts in check to a certain Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so it's a little bit like it's, there, there's this is the problem is there's a lot of nuance to this is that you know it seems it's not a bad idea but I, you know and you know me is you know i i want to see how this plays out in five years and i yeah. want to see where it actually sits in five years because looking at this from now it's like you know them tell if if, if i was in the market and they were like oh you know buy into this this is great um i would be like i don't know because it it doesn't there's a lot of uncertainty with it, right? Like, I, I don't know how well this trust is going to actually do or if it, if, it, if it will help or hurt DVC. Like, and even things like, you know, the whole thing about Alani selling out, you know, is this really going to help Alani if they roll it into the trust? I, I wonder that. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's going to be interesting. It, it, we really don't know what this is going to look like or even if they're going to do it or not. Right. Like we, we actually don't even know if they're going to do this. Right. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Again, this, this is all just guessing at this point, but you know, you know, kind of looking at, you know, D- Disney's trying something new. And, and and I think this is the hard part is that every time Disney tries something new, you know, there's, there's, you know, sometimes it works out and sometimes it, it's better off, but then also it doesn't always work out the way that everybody wants. So but and then the problem with DVC is that, you know, once you've you know, you know, you've you you highlighted earlier, you know, this is a contract that runs until 2075. So it's like who who wants to commit to that? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I think that's enough to uh, we can probably cover. Yeah, that let's up, right? like, let, let, let's leave that where it is. I'm sure we'll get more information here as we go along. Now, let's let's talk about the fun thing, which um Okay, so I'll start the premise, and then um, the uh, DVC has announced that a new lounge has been confirmed for Disney World. We don't know where yet. So yeah, we we don't know where yet. So this is yeah, where the speculation so, comes in. <laughs> so, so here's the fun part. Okay, so so Tom, where do you think this lounge is going to end up? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll, t- okay. I'll tell you what. Okay, I, I think this comes down to. Where is there some space for them to put a lounge, right? That's some unused space mm-hmm. that's sitting around that they can put a lounge. Now, listen, they could be building something brand new. I don't think they're going to. I think they're going to utilize some exi- existing space that's already there. I don't think it's going to be Magic Kingdom because I think that would just be really? – it, it would, Yeah, because it would have to be a huge lounge. Like mm-hmm. 
I mean, just because of the sheer amount of people that go to Magic Kingdom, it's like I, I, you'd have to have a really large lounge. And I mean, even now, the Epcot one still gets over, you know, gets overbooked sometimes where you, you have to wait for people to leave. Right. And that lounge is not huge, but it's not small either. I'm just thinking if you were to do Magic Kingdom, it's it's going to be too it's going to be either too small or too crowded. And it's. And I also just don't know where they put it at Magic Kingdom. Like for the life of me, I don't know if there's any space available at Magic Kingdom for for a lounge. Like okay, but like I don't know where they put it. No idea. But I, I mean, maybe there's some space that you know that I. I mean, hey, maybe they'll they'll uh, turn the old uh, the old uh, Stitch Ride into uh, into the lounge. I don't know. Who knows? That's a big space, right? That'd be kind of yep, great, actually. That, um, <laughs> that that was where my head was. Oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um. So, and I also don't think they're going to do Hollywood Studios. And I'll, I'll the other reason I'm going to say they're not going to do Hollywood Studios is again because Hollywood Studios is basically the second most popular park now, right? Like, I don't know if you saw some of the like the wait times while over the holidays, but Hollywood mm-hmm. Studios was mobbed. Um, along with I, I don't get it personally, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's going to be Animal Kingdom. Uh, I, I, that's, that's actually my guess. And, and also for me, I, I know everybody knows this, but I, I, you know, Animal Kingdom is my favorite park, but also, you know, there are many people and, and actually cast members have said this too, that, that say that Animal Kingdom is the hottest park, right? Because of all of the, the, uh, you know, the, the plants and, you know, all that stuff. Right. So where better to have a lounge to take a break and some air conditioning and get some drinks than the hottest park? That's no. that's what, that's my speculation. <laughs> okay, so 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 I'm gonna press you on this. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. What building? So so I'm thinking about Animal Kingdom and what's there right now. And the only place that's obvious. Um, so so Dino Land we know is being redone. I don't see a lounge going there because they're no. they're renovating that whole space. So where else would they put a lounge in? animal kingdom it's a good question there is i mean there is technically a, a, i think a event space that is over by dinosaur that is unused i think okay but to your point that that they're gonna tear up that whole area in the next couple of years here right i mean we we don't know that for sure but we we know that right yeah. like we we know it's happening we just it's just a matter of when it starts um so yeah, I mean, I, I think we have to have to uh, kind of see what's going to happen. I, I it's a good point. I don't know where they would put it, um, but Disney also has like all these spaces that we're just like not aware of, right? <laughs> like there's all these that, spaces that just exist that just that's you know, true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, they do a good job of like not leaving things obviously open. Like yeah. they, they'll cut it off and like it, it it exists you know behind a facade or something that you you'll have no idea it's there until they open it up so yeah that that's fair i guess you know you know of the spaces we know in animal kingdom there's nowhere obvious but that's not to say there's not there's not a something there that that you know hasn't been used in years that people forgot about <laughs> at the same time though trevor when they put club 33 lounge in animal kingdom they had to build a new building right they they built that's right. a standalone building right so you know, so you would, so it, it it maybe says to you that there is an available space there, um, but you know I, they had to do. I mean, they had to build new spaces for all those Club Thirty Three lounges, right? So, um, I don't know. I I don't know. This is tough. I, I'm really interested to see where they're going to put this. I, I just and I'm trying to think strategically of where they would want to put it. Now, I think you know the the best thing they could advertise would be a Magic Kingdom lounge, right? Like if if yeah. you could say we were putting a lounge in Magic Kingdom, I think. Most people would be very psyched about that, right? And I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to say that they're not going to do it. Like I just said, I mean, it's it, you have the problem of Magic Kingdom is the most popular theme park in the entire world, and so if you're going to, ha- and you know, of course, most of the DVC owners are Disney World DVC owners, so you're you're talking like you need a large space. And to your point, so you were thinking they put it in Stitch in that, the form that was my thinking because that that is a fairly large building, pretty big space that is. Yeah. It, and it's not being utilized at all. And, you know, we've, we've talked about it multiple times and, you know, what could they put there? You know, you're right. That, that would be a, a premier spot to put a lounge because, you know, it's, it's not shoved in a back corner. It's not, yeah. um, it, it, it's pretty front and center. And like you said, yeah, it would, it would be a very big like selling point for DVC that, you know, Hey, we have a lounge in Tomorrowland. And, and the other thing too, is I, I was kind of thinking about, 
they did the lounge in Tomorrowland in Disneyland. Oh, so um, same like, and, kind of connection there. Yeah, and and that again, you know, you know, we know how Disney loves. Um, they love. <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, as I'm choking on my coffee, um, <laughs> um, you know, they, they love how, uh, or they love to, you know, reuse stuff and I could see them potentially like what they did in the, in the Disneyland lounge, um, emulating that in, in Disney world, like, like, you know, making like a space lounge and kind of using the same, the same stuff that they did there, um, in Disney world. Because, because again, that's easy. It's not that they have to spend a bunch of time designing it or anything. It's, it's they basically just copy what they did somewhere else, and then you know, it you know means be, that. Good. I was going to say it means you know on the east and west coast there's there's a bit of parody there, right? Like like yeah. they can say you know that there's a lounge in Disneyland and Magic Kingdom. You know, you know, it would be really next level, right? Is if they, I mean, that's if I'm you know thinking about the old Stitch attraction properly. It's 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 takes up two floors, right? Yeah. So what if they were to <laughs> uh I mean, think about the proximity of this to the castle. You could make this a firework, a prime fireworks viewing space. Like Oh yeah, they they could offer um they could offer like yeah, you know, D- or DVC exclusive yeah. um dessert parties. That's what I'm saying, right? Like yeah. I mean, listen, you have the people mover in the way, um but it's not to say that they can't figure out a way to make a second lens. And now listen, that would, you know, require some construction, right? So they would Mm -hmm. have to do that. But, you know, if you were going to use that space, I mean, it's not a bad option to, uh, you, you got to really, you're very close to the castle. You could really easily, uh, you know, have some sort of fireworks, uh, viewing there. I mean, you could probably even do some parade viewing from there too. I mean, it's, it's that close. Yeah. It's, so, it would be as good as Tomorrowland Terrace. Absolutely. Right? Like, which yeah. is already a, a dessert party location. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, pr- it, in some ways it's better because it's, it's kind of closer. I mean, it is closer, mm-hmm. but it's, you know, I, I mean, I don't know about the angle, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting thought. Like you said, it's, yeah. it is a huge space. I mean, it's a very big space. I mean, and they would have to do a lot of work to repurpose this, right? Like they didn't have to do a ton of work to to the one at Epcot. That was just like new carpets and new furniture and stuff like this. This would be like legit construction that they'd have to do. Um, because yeah, but yeah, I I think anywhere that they go, that that is going to be the case. Is there is going to be construction? The the other one I was thinking of, like I know you said, like you know Hollywood Studios isn't doesn't seem plausible, but. I was thinking about, and, and, and uh, this is going to prove my ignorance of what is in Hollywood Studios, but this is, okay. <laughs> You've been my, very my, anti-Hollywood Studios. <laughs> my my personal opinion of Hollywood Studios, and, and, I, and I talked about this with my family over the break because we, we ha- we're, we're about a month out from our trip here. Yeah. And so we were talking about what we're going to do, and we realized that Hollywood Studios, um, because of the fact that uh, um, I, I saw there's a closure for Rock and Roller Coaster um yeah. coming up it's like well that you know tower terror and rock and roller coaster were kind of the two big things that we did there the, i know there's a bunch of other stuff like slinky dog and stuff but well you still haven't done, done rise of the resistance though either right yeah and, and you gotta do that yeah so so that's on our to-do list but outside of that um it's really a half day park for us i'm not saying it's not a half or, or that it is only a half day park but for us there's not enough there to keep us there and um, and then I started thinking about like, I, I remember there used to be like, uh, that, um, like, you know, the, the, who wants to be a millionaire show and, oh, yeah, the, yeah. and all that, like there, there was all those spaces, um, where they had like these shows. And I know a lot of those, like there are shows that have replaced some of those, like the, there's the, the Lightning McQueen Perfect. show and frozen and stuff like yeah. that. But I wonder how much of that space is actually being utilized because there was, there was actually a lot of other stuff. Like there's even like that Drew Carey sound. I remember that. Track. Yeah. 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 Like again, I, re- I remember like that one. Weird, yeah. yeah. Well, right well, now like, it's right now it's, it's vacation fun and it's, it's a, like a, um, it's a Mickey short is in there. So right. Theoretically, so, they could turn that space into a lounge if they wanted to. It's just a theater right now, right? So yeah, so so that's kind of my thinking is that you know Hollywood Studios is another potential place because there is a lot of these like theater spaces that they you know some of them have been reused and repurposed, but then there's a lot and, and you know like we said you know I don't know what's actually 
uh, or how much of it's actually utilized versus they've just like used half of a space and then cut off the rest because they love doing that too. Or, you know, they'll like yeah. rewall something and like behind the wall, there's just, you know, a, a ton of empty space. So Hollywood studios, I think is still on the table for a potential lounge too. Like I, I think it's honestly between magic kingdom and Hollywood studios. I, I know I want to believe that <laughs> animal kingdom could get it. Like I'm, I'm with you. I would, I would love a lounge in animal kingdom, but I see, you know, they want it somewhere where it is busy because part of the attraction of a lounge yeah. is, yeah, you know, you know, the whole reason that people say they love the lounge in Epcot is it's like, hey, you've been walking around, you've been doing all the attractions and you have a space to go that you can get a break from the busyness of, or, you know, being out in, in, you know, whatever park you're in. Right. So I can see where, you know, either of those parks is is a potential place for it. I, I want to believe that magic kingdom would be the place. That, and, you know, you know, the stitch space is the only space I can think of, but I, I could see them also turn around going, yeah, you know, here, we got this great lounge in Hollywood studios. And I'd be like, yeah, okay. I'm never going to use it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was also just thinking to myself too. I, I, you know, I said, there's no space for it, but they, I mean, star Wars launch bay. I mean, they can turn that into a lounge. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a star Wars like themed that, lounge would be pretty cool. That, I mean, that whole launch bay area is huge. It is. Like, it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was massive. Like there, cause we, we did a dessert party there when you're not, and, and it, cause I thought about that too. I was like, wow, like there's actually, there's a lot of space back there that again, you know, it, it's been used for different things over the years, but it's just that I think they've got a lot of space at Hollywood studios that, um, it, it's kind of like Lego blocks and yeah. that, you know, that they, they've done different things with it, but it doesn't all really fit together nicely. Like it's, it, it's kind of, um, everything's broken up weird. And, and so I think it's hard for them to do another big attraction there without like doing an entire land like they did with galaxy's edge. Yeah. But I, I think they're trying to look to utilize some of these other spaces that have been cut up along the way. Yeah, no, I, I could see that. I, I, so you, you actually, you haven't done Mickey and Minnie's yet either, right? No, that that's on our to-do list too. Like we're going to do Mickey's and Minnie's and Rise and, you know, we're going to try and get on Tower of Terror. And then outside of that, like I asked my kid, like, do you even want to do Star Tours? He's like, ah, I've, I've done it enough. Like I know. Oh man, to... really? I love Star Tours. Well, <laughs> yeah, but, but the thing is, is like, like, so, so the, in, and I could see this in his eyes when he said that is that in the back of his head, he was like. You know, I don't need to do that because if we do a half day at Ep or at Hollywood Studios, then we can go over to Epcot and he can probably get on to Guardians of the Galaxy. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. You know, when given the choice between Star Tours and Guardians, like not even Midway Mania, yeah. though, like I love Midway Mania <laughs> again. Yeah, you know, it's been there, done it. Yeah. we And and the thing is, we, we did Midway Mania a ton in Disneyland because yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. because it was like when, when we were first taking our son, like like we we were on Pixar Pier at the time Paradise Pier a lot and so we got our fill of of those rides so so that's part of the problem with Hollywood Studios too is that you know the we've done a lot of the stuff there and it, I mean Midway Mania is a nice ride but it doesn't have the um or it, it, like some rides I feel are more repeatable than others yeah. and Midway Mania is kind of like I, I, like once I've done it enough, it's like, I don't feel a need to go back and do it again, but I, they really should add new games to Midway Mania. I don't know yeah, why they that, haven't done that. I mean, there's so many opportunities for them to do that, especially with another tour story coming out. Like there's so many new characters they could put in. I mean, they could make the, they could do, they could really redo that pretty easily. I'm surprised they haven't. Um, yeah. Th and that's been exactly the thing is that we did it so many times. It was like, okay, we knew all the mini games and it was like, yeah. there's no uh, other than, you know, trying for a high score, you know, we don't want to sit there and keep doing it. And also with like, you know, the ride hurts your hand after a while, if you're like really into it. <laughs> so. are, are you going to sneak back over though and do phantasmic at night? I mean, cause you know, um, that's still up in the air. Okay. Um, we have, I mean, we that would, I, that's another one that I love. I love phantasmic. So yeah, I, I think that's actually going to depend on how luminous goes because, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, again, you know, you know, talking about, you know, half days, you know, if we're going to go back over to Epcot, the intent is, you know, we're going to go over to Epcot and stay the evening. And if we like Luminous, you know, we may end up staying and watching it a couple of times, which okay. means, you know, you know, I'm not going to go and watch Phantasmic. I'll go watch Luminous. So, well, I mean, but Phantasmic is say. new too, though, too. I mean, there's new stuff in True. Phantasmic since last time you saw it. So, yeah. 
So yeah, I mean, like I said, it's it's still kind of up in the air right now. We we haven't we haven't solidified that far yet. <laughs> We've gone very off, far off the top. We did, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't planning to talk about my trip yet, but I guess you know. Yeah, well, you know, but, you get yeah. a preview. You get a little preview. Uh, yeah, no, listen, I I'll be I'll be interested to see where they put this. Um, I I'm assuming. See, I think. I think 24 is going to kind of be the year of announcements. I know people mm-hmm. have been waiting for like, you know, they, they announced last year that they're going to put a lot of money into the parks. Right. And, and they're going to do that. The, I mean, they, they, this is, they put this in filings with the sec and stuff. Like it, they're, they're going to spend this money in the parks. Part of it, honestly, I think they're waiting uh, for all of the Florida mess to work itself out. Uh, the lawsuits and such that they have with the state of Florida. I think yeah. that is a big part of it. They're kind of waiting for all that to work itself out. Um, and then, you know, maybe they'll, they'll announce some more things. I, I do think, you know, beginning of this year, I mean, uh, first half of this year or, or, or mid year, I think we are going to get a lot of, uh, I think we're going to get a vision for the next, you know, 10 years at, at Disney world. Right. Like, I, I think they're going to give us that, um, because that's, you know, that's what the, what, what the investors and stockholders have been, have been looking for is, is, uh, you know, focus on the parks that, you know, the competition's getting is, is, you know, heating up even more and, they want to. They want them to invest in the parks, right? So, which is a good thing. I mean, we we want that. We just don't know a lot about it yet, right? And so, I think yeah. people just need to be patient. We're gonna we're gonna get announcements. It's it's just gonna be, you know, it's gonna take some time. So, yeah, I mean, and and this is so you know, this is a good segue into the next part, which you know, the there is twenty four things that have been announced for Disney in twenty twenty four. Yeah. So the none of these are gonna be like huge. Or, or they're not things that we haven't already talked about. I, I feel to a certain degree, like like some of these are, um, some of these are new, but it's nothing like, uh, yeah. it's nothing like new attraction or like new, um, new Except park. For Tiana, I guess, right? Yeah, Tiana, I mean, but, but Tiana, we are, yeah, yeah, Tiana, we already knew about, like, yeah, yeah, coming into this year, right? So, 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 yeah, I guess that's the first thing is you know, Tiana is is going to be opening in uh, both Disneyland and Disney World. Sometime so, in 2024. We don't even have yeah. a season yet for that one yet, but yeah. So it looks like so, they're making good progress though. I, I have to tell you when mm-hmm. I was there, there was a lot of work being done. I mean, like they were moving faster than I feel like I've ever seen them work on stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it myself. Like I, I, I want to see what's changed. I've, I've heard a lot about like, you know, you can start to see where um, like, like, you know, the, the old facades have been taken down and the new stuff is coming up. So yeah, yeah it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing how much it's changed from, you know, what you showed as well. Cause you know, you, like you, you were showing like some of the murals and stuff that they had yeah. done. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Unfortunately, you know, it's not going to be open by the time I go, but, <laughs> yeah, no. um, yeah, it, again, it makes for something to look forward to on a, on a future trip. You definitely get a good uh, look at the queue from the train, though. And when you take the, if you take the Walt Disney World Railroad through uh, through that station, you get a really yeah. good look at what they're doing in the queue. Yeah, you see, and you know, the, this is going to be the first time I get to ride the train in like five, five years. years. Too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, listen, that was a big <laughs> yeah. thing for me. I was so excited mm-hmm. for that. Um, it did not disappoint, except for that tunnel underneath Tron that made me sad, but because <laughs> <laughs> I wanted so much more from it. Um, <laughs> so, so funny enough, the the next thing on this list is they're they're talking about uh, new characters and stories in Star Tours, Star Tours is coming this year. Which, again, they they haven't released a date on when this is happening. Um, so I, I'm not banking on this to be there in a month. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I mean, but it's yeah. probably also not that hard for them to do, right? Like, it's it's again, it's it's the same Toy Story Mania thing. That's like. It, you know they they've been plugging in new scenes into star tours now like pretty much every year for the past you know ever since they started doing the random random uh you know journeys so like mm-hmm. how i mean I, I know it's a little bit different because it's there's a game involved and so there's you know more stuff there but i don't know just like it shouldn't be that difficult for them to plug this stuff in you know yeah yeah it feels like yeah you know they they if they can do this for Star Tours, it's a fair point. Is a why have they not had a look at Midway Mania? Yeah, maybe they will. I don't know. Maybe that's one of the things they're going to change up this year. I don't. I don't know. Who knows? Um, also, to to note on here, um, so I, I feel like the the Star Tours stuff that because they also say from April fifth to June second, season of the Force will arrive in Disneyland Park with Hyperspace Mountain and special merchandise. I feel like the Star Tours stuff is probably going to tie in with that. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, that they'll do like, you know, hey, it's coming up on May the 4th. You know, here's some, here's new Star Tours 
stuff as well as hyperspace mount which hyperspace mountain's awesome for anybody that has been on it like you know it's <laughs> It, it's a, it's one videos. of the, it looks very cool. Yeah. It, it's one of the um, few times where I feel an overlay is just purely superior to to the actual ride. ride. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Like I, I I could leave it at Hyperspace Mountain all the time. But nice. Yeah, whereas, I also get why people, you know, people like classic. Yeah, Haunted yeah. Mansion. You yeah. can take it or leave it. Right. So. Haunted Mansion needs to not be six months of the year in <laughs> Disneyland where that where it's um, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, so then we also right. we've got uh, Pixar Fest is returning to Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, which is and there are, there's going to be an all new daytime parade called Better Together, a Pixar Pal celebration. So it looks like there's going to be a lot of Pixar characters. We've just got you know really it looks like there's some Turning Red uh, characters here. Which listen, if you haven't seen Turning Red, I really enjoyed Turning Red. I I, I had a good time with that movie. I thought it was really uh, cool, and I, I think it's. Great that they're actually including uh, characters from that in the parks. Um, also, too, I saw that they're re-releasing all the movies that happened during the pandemic. Uh, did you see in that they're theaters, putting those yeah. movies back in theaters so that you can actually like go see them in theaters? Which is nice because you know mm-hmm. so many of those Pixar movies uh, got released directly to Disney Plus during the pandemic, and you couldn't see them in theaters. So I I think that's that's a good idea by them. You know, just pull in some more money too, but also just get more awareness on these characters and all that, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's a good thing for, for people who are passionate about going to the movies. And like you said, you know, I think, I think a lot of these shows didn't get the, uh, the, they didn't get the acknowledgement that they deserved. Like, like yeah. turning red um, onward was another good one that, that I liked onward I really too. Liked. Yeah. yeah I and, liked onward. and you know, th- those kind of shows didn't, um, yeah, they they just didn't get the the same fanfare that that bigger shows get, and it's not that I'm expecting that you know it's gonna this is gonna be like the next Moana or Frozen or whatever. No, but no. Um, you know, well, it's, even yeah, Encanto. It's nice that remember, Encanto yeah. came out like at the beginning of the pan, like while That's things true. were shutting yeah. down, and like it picked up a lot on Disney Plus. But Encanto like was really not. It was kind of a bomb in the theaters, but it was really just because the theaters were shutting down, right? Like. You know, yeah, I, th- yeah, that had nothing to do with with popularity because I, I mean, yeah, Kanto blew up once it was on. Disney yeah, Plus, that soundtrack right? was number one for like a year. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, sorry. Go so ahead, so again, uh, yeah, these these other shows are, are getting getting their their fair crack at it. Um, the it's funny that they put the the Pixar themed hotel on this list as a as a thing to look forward to in twenty twenty four because I thought it was already I thought yeah, this was, was already, already done. Yeah. Well, it's, guess... it's opening January 30th, so it's, oh, okay. early, right. it's an early year thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. And and also Fantasmic returning <clears throat> to Disneyland. Now, here's my question for you, Trevor, as someone who has seen the original Fantasmic and knows that they're not bringing back the uh, Maleficent uh, figure and they're mm-hmm. going to do something different. Is that disappointing to you? Is that not Fantasmic I mean, anymore? Or if they replace it uh, with something good, is it going to be good? I'll be honest. Um, for me, that particular phantasmic the the maleficent part of the show was not the most impressive part of the show for me okay that's good Um, because and and it's not to say that it was bad like like you know it it was a great effect and and i'm curious to see what they do with the new um or with the redo of it you know you know without causing fires and stuff but they 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 said in here fires and stuff (laughs) that's that's one way to put it trevor (laughs) uh, okay maleficent has a real problem with causing fires this is not the only time maleficent has caused a fire because the same thing happened in in magic kingdom right (laughs) no that's you're 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 not wrong you're you're so maleficent you know causing fires (laughs) yeah so 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 they've they've sorted that out I'm, i'm being very nice about it yeah um but the thing that they they actually say in here is the return of the iconic peter pan scene now for me the whole peter pan scene that is that is the most impressive part of phantasmic in disneyland because it is literally a fight on a moving pirate ship okay which is just like you don't get you don't get that in florida sorry that they have not done that in florida so the fact that that is there that you know you know, even if the the Maleficent effect is not as great as it was previously, fine, whatever. The fact that this is coming back for me is enough for Fantasmic. Like that, that makes it worthwhile. All right. Yeah. We also have Communicore Plaza is finally going to open, uh, and Communicore Hall at uh, Epcot, 
which you know this this is following the the we've talked about this before right so uh, mm-hmm. and this was supposed to open with the rest of Walcott but um it get obviously got delayed a little bit um but they're saying it'll be completed in 2024 we don't know exactly when as of yet but the new spaces which first of all if they look anything like the concept art are going to be extremely cool looking um not as cool yes. as the original concept art cuz remember the original concept art had the, like that three level like crazy the yeah the thing. big festival area oh, which, yeah, yeah, so cool. yeah the now but and, yeah, yeah that was cool it's not as cool but it's it is still very cool looking it looks very epcot it's got that you know geodesic sphere look to it and uh this is going to house the spot to meet mickey and friends as well as uh there's a there's going to be a uh, f- the festival space there uh for new exhibits and entertainment and uh you know that kind of thing so it's it's going to be a really cool uh, section, I think, of Epcot, and then you know that'll represent the end of uh, all of the construction at Epcot for the time being. <laughs> until new construction starts. Until <laughs> until the rest of it starts, yeah. Until yeah. they finally so, you know do other stuff there. So okay, so so just help me out here for a second because I'm I'm having a hard time visualizing exactly where this is. Is this where the old Club Cool was? or is it's this that side of the yeah it's that yeah. okay so, yeah, so yeah. it's that side of like or where that side of like interventions yes was yeah it's, or, it's or where, not, not interventions it's, it's actually the other or, or across the street whatever, whatever that walkway through was yeah like. that, yeah it's on the other side of, of, of okay it, yeah it's okay. on the other side of connections on the opposite side yeah op- opposite of connections from from spaceship earth okay yes. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, it, yeah. Sorry, I, I I always love like they show the they show this concept art, and and the problem I have with it is that they never show um like another point of reference. They always show like you know here's this building, and it's like I don't know where this is. I don't I don't know where the, how this fits into everything. Yeah, no, I yeah. I can see that. That makes yeah. sense. So so yeah, I'm I'm trying. I'm just trying to visualize it, and you know you know the fact that like you said you know the fact that it is the geodesic sphere like like it looks like spaceship earth you know i think that will just you know it, it just further ties yeah um epcot together right or, or you know that whole neighborhood so yeah I, I think it'll it'll be nice it's funny that you say that though too right cuz it's like i know where journey of water uh is but at the same mm-hmm. time i'm like in my mind can't figure out how it fits in that spot Right. So yeah, like, because I there was to, a building there. Yeah. Like, yeah I just, <laughs> like I need to go see it in person and be like, oh, OK, I see how it fits in that spot now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this, you know, the, the funny thing is, is that when when you and I were there, like we walked past that to get yeah. to um to get to Ratatouille that one yeah, morning. Did, yeah. And and the, the funny thing is, is that that side has been like it. That's been a walkway for so long, but that used to be the building. And, and like like you said, it's funny that how we like forget that it's there but we still yeah. kind of try to place it there when we're visualizing the space <laughs> yeah exactly yeah exactly yeah. yeah yeah uh so one of the things i thought was interesting and you know so right before the pan well like this was actually pre it was like very close to the beginning of the pandemic they shut down the little mermaid show uh at, yeah. at hollywood studios which i don't know if you ever saw that show it was a pretty good show um, I think I only ever saw it once, uh, and it was when we were trying to do all four parks in one day, uh, and we just there was no wait for it, and we were like, "All right, let's hit this thing up," and, and, and you know it was pretty good, but it's been shut down, and it's just the building's just been sitting there empty, right, with mm-hmm. no performers or anything, and so now Disney announcing in 2024 there's going to be an all new theatrical production of The Little Mermaid uh, on in that stage, uh, and they're going to have you know new set pieces, new effects. Uh, new designs, a whole it's a whole new show. So which is great. I, I, I hate seeing stuff close and then it just sits there empty, you know. And I, I do think that uh, you know, Hollywood Studios has, you know, like the Beauty and the Beast show, it has this show, is Indiana Indiana Jones, it has uh, you know, the Frozen show. Like, you know, Hollywood Studios is is a park that that has a lot of It's the show shows. park. It is the show <laughs> park. Yeah, it's the show park. So I feel like you need you need to have this back, right? Yeah. And and I mean, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier, where, you know, there's a lot of spaces in Hollywood studios that feels like they've, you know, walled them off or cut them off. And you kind of wonder, like, like how much of it's actually used. But yeah, you know, this is this is, you know, it's 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 nice that they didn't um, just drop this. Like, it's obvious that they want they had intent for it and we're going to see the result of it. I the, the thing for me is that. um I, we don't sit down and watch a lot of those shows because it, for our particular party, like, you know, me and my son like to be on the attractions, 
even my wife doesn't like, I, I think none of us like to just stop and watch, watch a show. show. Yeah. yeah get- like, which is funny. Like, like, like we should be there to, you know, just take in entertainment and stuff like that. But I, I think for, for all of us, it's like, we, we all kind of agree that it's like, you know, I, I don't want to like wait for the show and like spend an hour there when I could be doing something else. And it's not to say that the show's bad. It's just, it's not, it's not what we want to do. Not enough right? action for you guys. You, you want you well, want to be doing stuff. Even, it's not even that. Like like we like you know we have stay like we watch the Indiana Jones show and stuff like that, and it, it's just that it takes it takes up time and yeah 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 like time's kind of at a premium when we're there and and, and I think it's you know it kind of goes back to you know when we were first going to Disney it was like we felt like we had to like pack every single minute. And so, so it's hard for us to rationalize that a show is part of that because it feels like, well, I don't want to spend, or, or that's like a time commitment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm not, I'm not saying Again. that, you know, you know, this would be bad. It's just, you know, I, you it's know, it's great that, yeah, it's great that it's coming back. I'm just not going to go see it probably. I, I shouldn't say I, I won't. It's just not, it's not high on the to-do list. No, that, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So a couple things, this, if you're listening to us day one, uh, you know, so if you're listening to this, when we release the show tomorrow, if you're hearing me right now yep. tomorrow, a whole bunch of things are changing, right? <laughs> we're going back to pre pandemic <laughs> days. It's, it's like, we're going, you know, we're hopping in the DeLorean. We're going to back to the past. We're go- I, I don't oh, want to say back DeLorean. to the future. Yeah. I, What's that? <laughs> the DeLorean. Yeah. We're hopping in the DeLorean. Yeah. I actually, that, that 1980s I, DeLorean. That, that's perfect. I love it. <laughs> My wife and I actually just bought tickets to the Back to the Future musical. Um, nice. Because, yeah, so. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just tell this really quickly. So I, my wife and I, our, our first date, we, uh, we, we found that we had a shared love for the Back to the Future movies. And so our first date after we had dinner culminated with us watching all three Back to the Futures in a row. And nice. so, yeah. <laughs> and so it just so happens that the Back to the Future music, musical is going to be by me during uh, the month of our wedding anniversary. So it's kind of like our anniversary thing. We're going to go see Back to the Future musical. So <laughs> I'm also finding it too that all the movies from my youth are now turning into musicals because uh, two weekends ago we went and saw the the Beetlejuice musical. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I saw that. I, I saw that you were you were yeah. there, and I was like, I was like, oh, cool. Like it was yeah, funny. It, it was really good. I was not what I was expecting, but it was good. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean that that's the thing is you know you know that these musicals are like again reimagining of these old movies so you get yeah. you get you get a new experience out of something that you know exactly exactly yeah. so it, no it was fun though and then we we also got tickets to back to the future so i which i've heard is very good too so i'll be excited to uh to hear the musical uh version of um um power of love uh <laughs> i don't even I mean, know if that's in the show i'm wh- assuming it is <laughs> why why would you change that song like it's you, I listen. I'm just saying. Like, I could see it. I mean, I don't even know if it's in the soundtrack because like, I haven't listened to anything. I just, I'm like, okay. you can't have Back to the Future without that song. It's an iconic part of. Yeah, the I, mean, movie. It's, I mean, it's 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 like the the main song of the movie. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so January 9th, we got a lot of stuff coming back. So first of all, Park Park Hopper is back to its yes. original original iteration where you can park you can park hop anytime you want. Uh, no more restrictions. Going to make use of this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you will. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, and, as you should. Yeah, and then yeah. you know, dining plans are also back too, um, which you probably won't mm-hmm. make use of, but they're back. I know a lot no, of people I, are pretty pumped about that. So I've never used a dining plan, but again, the fact that it's back is great because, like you said, it's it's that pre-pandemic, like yeah. you know, things that things that Disney should be offering. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then you know the other. I mean, obviously, this might be the biggest one for a lot of a lot of people. Is no more theme park reservations. How exciting is that? <laughs> it's it's weird. I'll, I'll say this, okay. <laughs> and, and the reason I say this, you got so used to it. <laughs> yeah, for, exactly. For the for the last couple of years, I like like, it, and it's funny because. Or, or actually, okay. So I'm going to go on a tangent because okay. why not? Let's. That's okay. Let's we just were just talking about Back to the Future. Um, so <laughs> exactly. So so um, what um, you know, I've been planning for this trip, right? And you know, for for the longest time, it was like I had like I had reminders for um, you know fast pass days. I had reminders for advanced dining reservations. I had theme park reservation days, like that. I <laughs> like so I was I was always so used to. Um, you know, doing all this way ahead planning. But again, that's just because how 
how I am is, you know, I like to, I, I like to have a plan in place so that I can break it. And part of it is making sure that I have all those reservations and everything. And this, so, so this lot or this trip coming up, I did my dining reservations back in December and um, there was only, we're, we're doing two dining reservations when we're there, but that was the only thing I had to book ahead of time. And it felt really weird because it was like, like this whole thing, like, you know, thinking about that, oh, you know, I don't have to do theme park day reservations. Like I was looking at my plan and it's like, yeah, you know, we've kind of figured out what days we're going to be where, and we've got, you know, we've got these two dining reservations and that's it. <laughs> like it, it, it felt a little like, um, like unceremonious. Like it was no, just like, it, no, cause it, you used yeah, to have it, to do so much. Like it was 180 days out. You did your dining, uh, you know, 60 days out, you did your, your fast passes or 90 days out. Wasn't it 90 and 60 at one point? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was like, it was 90 and 60. And so, so yeah, yeah it's funny because it's like it, in the past, it was like, I, I would have that like lead up to the, to the trip where it was like, you know, yes, I got what I wanted or, or, you know, I got to keep checking this so that I can get this reservation. And so it, I was a lot more engaged And this time. It's like, oh yeah, I did, you know, got these reservations. Cool. Like, <laughs> that's it and it, and it just it it it, it doesn't feel or, or it, it's not that it's a bad thing but it feel you know that feeling when like you're packing and it's like okay i'm missing something like like you yeah yeah it's yeah. like you know in the back of your head that it's like okay i've got everything i I know i'm good but i'm sure i missed something i'm i'm sure i forgot about something and that's almost what it feels like with them taking this away and and that's just because it's new right like yeah, it's, just it's, it's you know yeah. you know it's a new change but it just feels a little odd at the moment because it's like I don't have to think about which park I'm going to, and I can actually change. Like I, I can decide when I get up in the morning. You know, if I was going to go to Epcot that day, instead I want to go to Animal Kingdom. Yeah, exactly. And I don't have to do anything. Like I can just show up at the just door. do it. <laughs> right? like, <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and I know it sounds weird because it's like, well, that's how it was before. But it's like, yeah, we've been doing this though for. For long enough, you know, you know, a couple of years three that it's years, like yeah, three years. Yeah, now that now that it's gone away again, it's like oh, I I, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I agree with you. Yeah. It's funny though because like you know I I think I've talked about this that we're doing a fairly large trip in May, right? Like with with all a lot of family, we're going to have ten of us. Mm-hmm. And um, my brother in law has been texting me like, um, you know, being like, oh, like what tickets are we going to buy? Like you know, what dining reservations are we going to do? And I'm like, dude, it's like may like we got time <laughs> like you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. it's like we yeah. we've got we got a couple months to figure this stuff out like we don't have to buy tickets now we don't have to do dining reservations now there's nothing we need to do right now but it's like they have it they i mean they went fairly recently but i mean they you know you that's what you had to do before you know we, yeah. disney people would laugh at, at at people that are like oh yeah no i just made my reservation like uh you know a couple weeks ago and uh and I, I haven't done any fast pass. So I'll just figure out when I get there. I haven't done any dining reservations, whatever. It's like, okay, have fun with yeah. that. <laughs> you know? yep. But that doesn't exist. I mean, that's not really the thing anymore. It's like you, you still have to plan a little bit far out. But listen, people used to complain about how far out you'd have to plan. You know, people would complain about that all the time, about having to do fast passes that far out, having to do um, dining reservations that far out. So, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, and, some people liked and, it. Some people didn't. Right. Yeah. And, and I guess, you know, that's not to say that I thought it was the best thing. Like it, I knew it was a necessary evil, but for me it was, you know, you know, because I knew it was there and I was engaged in it, it, it just became like, it was just something that I did. And then when it wasn't there, it, like, like I said, you know, that's where it, you know, for, for those of us that were planning really far ahead, it feels, it feels a little empty <laughs> that, yeah. that we don't have, or, or I, I think what it is, is that it's not that, that it feels empty is that it gave me something to do leading up to the trip. Like it, it was kind of like its own little mini game <laughs> that yeah, I yeah, could, yeah, exactly. I could play with like, you know, like, you know, finding the right booking and, you know, doing all this planning and stuff. And now that it's not there, I'm, I'm just a little sad that I don't have something to keep me that engaged leading up to it. And, it, and you know, that it's not the worst thing. It's just, you know, I, I like having a reason to like log in and look at my reservation and besides just like logging in and looking at my reservation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. 
All right, so let's um, right. let's let's skip through some of these because I don't think we need to talk okay. about all yeah, these, right? Yeah. So, like, um, the country bear, country bear. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited for this. We talked about this when this was announced. I, I I'm excited for them to do a new show. Um, let's let's just look at other stuff that's for Disney yeah, World so, specifically. Right? So so the cake bake shop at Disney Boardwalk again. We we talked about this. Uh, nothing nothing surprising here. We just know that it's coming. Yeah. Um. Run Disney returns to Disneyland Resort, plus a new Halloween themed event. So, it, so these are just more Run Disney dates. Fantasy, Fantasy Springs, Springs yeah, yeah, Tokyo Disney Sea. What are again? Uh, th- this is the uh, Rapunzel's Forest, Peter Pan's Neverland, and Frozen Kingdom. So that's all opening this year. We we talked about that previously. You guys can go back and we, we had a whole episode <laughs> where we where we talked about that. Um. Oh. Uh, Okay, this one's kind of oh, th- this is the reopening. So, so the Disneyland Hotel in Disneyland Paris, yeah, yeah, because because we have to be that confusing. Um, <laughs> is reopening it's multiple January. things Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the Disneyland at Disney Paris. Like, yeah, it's just I don't know. Call it the Disney Paris Hotel. Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's reopening January twenty fifth. So, so again, the, you know, this is a lot of a uh, lot of. Internet, you know, they're they're covering, you know, they're, they're, it's not just stuff happening in the North American parks. You know, the international parks are have got stuff going on too. Um, the Disney Treasure is going to be coming this year, twenty twenty four, and and uh, Brian uh, Brian from D, uh, DCL Duo, yeah, said he was going to be on the main voyage for this, if I recall. Was, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, so looking forward to hearing what he has to say about that. I mean, that's. That's not till December though, so that's a long way out. That's a, it's a pretty long way <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. Uh, that's barely in twenty four. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, we're just gonna skip. Yeah, Catlin's, yeah. Let's just skip a bunch of the stuff. It, it, I mean, it, we it, talked about the member lounge. This is where they yeah. announced that there's going to be a new member lounge. Um, of course, we yeah. talked about the four wilderness cabins, uh, and then you know they're talking a little bit about this. I don't know what the Stitch Attacks merchandise. Okay. I know you're a big Stitch guy, so you know maybe this is appealing to you guys. <laughs> uh, where? Oh, you got? Oh, you went even. I went further. to 21, my I was, friend. I was looking yeah. at the story living. Okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah we so talked the, enough about story living. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so the Stitch Attack snacks collection. Uh, okay. Interesting. It's interesting animation. It's like an interesting art yeah. style. I feel like. Yeah. Um, on the shirt so every month there's going to be a themed plush and pin set available on shop Disney featuring stitch with a different tasty treat this. Oh man, it's going to be a problem for you. <laughs> this is well, no, I mean, problem for your wallet. I'll have, to, I should say. <laughs> I'll have to keep an eye on this because I, I, this, this isn't going to be a collect them all kind of thing, but if there's one that shows up that like ticks all the boxes for my family, I'm going to probably be hunting for, <laughs> for a, a, a stitch plushie at some point and because yeah there, there's going to be 12 of these so oh yeah i'll have to keep an eye on this <laughs> you're one. gonna have to keep an eye on that one yeah yeah what about this star wars this open world star wars game is that something you're gonna get into? i know uh, you're like outlaws? what's that yeah I'll, yeah that's uh, yeah star wars outlaws yeah um i know you're out, a little out on star wars right now but i, I know yeah i mean all about the game so i mean i, I guess I don't know. So, so here's the interesting thing is that I, I kind of wrote off the, uh, the avatar game that just came out and it turns out it's actually, it's surprisingly a decent game. Like I've it's heard not, it's a good game. Yeah. 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 Like the, this is the thing is that I don't, I don't want to just immediately go, yeah, whatever I'm out on this. Um, I need to, uh, the, the, the hard part for me is when they say, you know, it's an open world game. Um, open world is very much a mixed bag. And because you'll get some open world games that are fantastic and fun to play and they the world feels like it's alive. And I think this will be the big thing about this is that um, if, you know, being an open world game, as long as it's not just a giant sandbox with nothing in it, um, that's what they need to be careful of. Because... A lot of studios will be like, you know, we got this massive world and you can go and explore, you know, an entire planet or, you know, multiple planets. Even like there's games like No Man's Sky and stuff where you're exploring multiple planets, but there's nothing to do. Yeah. And that's that's what I I'm I haven't looked into this one too much yet 
because I, I tend to wait until closer to releases on games like this before I like really start paying attention to them. If it turns out that it's just like, yeah, you, you know, you've got, you know, you've got droids and a blaster and a lightsaber, but you're just like, you know, driving around, not doing anything. Um, I hope I hope that they they do more with it than a lot of open world games have lately. <laughs> and, yeah, that, that, and, and and the thing is, is you know, Avatar was a good example of you know they didn't do that. Like they actually made some interesting gameplay. Like you know, you know, training the Banshee is actually kind of a cool sequence, and it, and it feels like like I, I I remember like when I saw that I was like, oh yeah, I can see where this is good because you know after riding uh, um, flight, of uh, flight of Passage, yeah, it's like. I, I see where they got the inspiration from and I, and it, it feels like, you know, they put some thought into it and they didn't just try to shovel something out the door, which yeah, the, a, a lot of game companies do that. Like they just try to get something out and um, I'll just have to wait and see how this one looks. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think that's all I got for this 24 list. I mean, D23, yeah. sure, but they do that every year. Right. So it's not like anything. Yeah. <laughs> and but what is this? Um, what is these? What are these global ambassadors? Oh yeah, they they've always had global point. ambassadors. Mm, I think they no. just have new ones. Oh okay. Oh it's so, oh it's just, okay. It's just changing. All right. I was, and and yeah, it looks like this is more focused on Hong Kong Disneyland for yeah yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, listen, so, yeah, it's, it, they're 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 stretching to give twenty four things right. Like yeah, which, yeah. That's what I was, I was like. What is what is interesting about this but. they're they're, they're, they're <laughs> stretching for sure yeah uh and you know we also we talked to, we talked a little bit about park reservations before too uh, it's it's mm-hmm. worth mentioning park reservations are still going to exist for pass holders right so um but they're going to have these uh they're going to have these call these uh, so-called good to go days that are just like you don't need a reservation you can just show up so i'm assuming those are just going to be days that disney knows they're not going to be nearly as busy right um, yeah and I think that's a fair compromise because, you know, for the pass holders, it, it it's actually better than just giving flat blackout dates. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because because in the past they would just, you know, black out and say, like, you know, sorry, you're, you know, pass holders just can't come on these certain days. This feels like a good middle ground where they're actually making use of the reservation system. And they're saying, you know, OK, we can let a certain amount of pass holders in knowing that it's a busier day that, you know, obviously they, they want to they want as many people in the park that are spending money as possible, you know, like closer to Christmas and stuff like that. So it's kind of nice that they're, you know, and and it's also like park specific, right? Yeah. So, so you know, it's, it's like you may, you know, as a pass holder, you may still have opportunity to go to, you know, one park, you know, go to Epcot, even though magic kingdom is, you know, reservations are full up. Right. Like I, I, I think it's a good middle ground. Right. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Now, and also going back to the dining plan a little bit too, right? So I thought mm-hmm. this was really interesting, right? So free dining is making a comeback, <laughs> which we knew it would, right? Like we Disney has always used the free dining promotion, which listen, we we've said this I think before. Free dining isn't really free. Yeah, <laughs> it's air quotes free. Free. Like, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So but it's interesting to me that they're they're doing this um they used to just you know offer free dining to anybody which and they probably will have a free dining promotion that's available to anybody but now they're also doing one where uh Disney Plus subscribers can get a free dining plan and you know the caveats to this are they can get a free dining plan when purchasing a non-discounted room there's the key non-discounted yeah. room with mm-hmm. a four night, four day Walt Disney World travel uh company package that includes a room at select Disney Resort hotels and theme park tickets with park hoppers. So they're also making you do park hopper tickets. So that's, that's a, that's a new caveat. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I, I don't know if, if you're, if you're already like all in on like dining plan and everything, like I feel like you're doing park hopper anyway. Yeah, but, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so this is going to be for most nights, July 1st through September 30th, which, you know, they often will have the free dining plan around these times. Um, I, I just think it's an interesting thing that they're doing it as a perk of Disney plus considering, you know, Disney plus costs what, like, um, you know, 80 bucks a year or whatever it costs. I mean, I'm, I'm doing mm-hmm. the bundle, so I don't know. It's like $20 for Hulu and Disney plus. So, but I mean, to, to just like, you could just sign up for Disney plus for a month and get this right. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's an interesting way to, to incentivize Disney plus members. Yeah. And, and, but I think it's also a way for them to, um, 
you know, that this is, you're right. You're right. People could just, you know, sign up for Disney plus and then drop it. But I feel like this is hinting at, you know, Hey, Disney plus subscribers, you know, we're going to use that as an angle to benefit people where this comes back to, you know, we've talked in the past about, you know, how Disney plus has had its ups and downs and, you know, it hasn't been, it hasn't been in a great place for a little while, unfortunately, because of the, you know, the way the previous management handled it. Um, tying it into park reservations or tying it into dining plans and stuff is a good way to um, it's a good way for them to kind of, uh, you know, put it all under the same umbrella that it's like, hey, you know, if you're going to Disney, you should be subscribing to Disney Plus. And and it, it goes back to the whole like business model around, you know, everything feeds everything else. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you know, that that way, um I guess it's probably their way of, you know, making people who have Disney plus feel like they're getting some extra value out of it. And, and further to that is, you know, people that are looking at going to Disney that, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people's thought process, well, I'm going to Disney. Well, I'll just, you know, get Disney plus for the year anyway. And, you know, you know, I'll watch it. And, but, you know, I also get my dining plan. Right. And cause, yeah. cause the thing is, you know, the month thing, it's like, you know, for the cost of the dining plan, I'm sure a lot of people would justify, well, I'll just get the whole year yeah. because, yeah, yeah. you know, the co- yeah. even the cost of a year of, Di- of Disney Plus, you're still saving money on it by getting this dining plan offer. Right. So and then exactly. and then and then from Disney's side, you know, they get to show that, they you know, their subscriber count has gone up because yeah. people are into this. Right. So. Yeah. And, and you know, here's yeah. the other part to notice, too. Right. So we talked about the dining plan not being free. Right. And the non discounted room piece. If you go further mm-hmm. down, there's. They also have a, a standing deal right now where you can save up to 35% at Disney Resort Hotels when you stay five nights or longer on most nights from March 25th to October 3rd. In some cases, and I, and, and I don't know if this is still true or not, but when I used to be the, do the travel agent thing, there were times where it was better to take the room discount than the free dining plan, right? So like the room discount yeah. was was better – uh, and again, it depended on everybody's situation, right? So, it, it, but we all hear free dining plan, and you're like, well, but that thing is free. How can this, how can, you know, the discount just be better? And it's like, well, just sometimes it works out that way. You can save more on the room and you can still purchase the dining plan and still end up saving money, you know? And, and I don't, that might not be true anymore with the newer prices for the rooms or for the, the dining plan, but that was the way it worked out you know, back, back I mean, when I used to do this. So the, the funny thing is, is, you know, when, when you look at how much room rates have gone up, um, a 35% discount on a room, um, I feel like, like that's a still a pretty substantial chunk of money. Like, I, yeah. I, I think you're right that, you know, if, if you're looking to take advantage of free dining plan or room discounts, like you really need to do the math to see which one actually plays out better. But there is also the factor too of, you know, a lot of people will just go for the dining plan because of there is that convenience factor too. Right. You know, the whole, you know, a lot of people says, you know, they didn't want to think about, you know, you know, am I, you know, am I getting food here or how much does this cost? It's just, you know, my food is paid for and done. Right. Like, so, so it's, uh, yeah, you know, it, it really depends on situation. And yeah, you know, 35% on a room. Um, I feel like, you know, on value resorts, it probably is trending closer to, you know, one might be better than the other. I feel like if you're going on a moderate or a deluxe resort, the f- room rate is probably going to save you money more than I agree. the uh, than the dining plan, because those rooms get a lot more expensive. <laughs> they do. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I mean, the 35% on rooms is on a lot of the de- deluxe resorts, right? So in, in it, the the discount amount varies based on how long you stay when you're doing it. Yeah. So look into these. There's a lot of discounts out there right now. So um, yeah, that's definitely check that out. I just I just thought this was interesting. A free dining plan with Disney Plus subscribers. So yeah. Um, I, all right. It's we funny. need to talk about this animatronic now before we, yeah, I, we listen, I, I saw, I'm glad Damon's not here because Damon was somehow not impressed by this and I don't understand. I how. don't. Okay. <laughs> Damon I, confuses this, me sometimes because it's like, how can you not be impressed by this? <laughs> all right. So, so for, for everyone, um, th- this came out a little while or yeah, a this was actually ago. before Christmas. So, before so Christmas. this was like right before Christmas. 
Um, they did a, uh, um, they had a animatronic of Duke Weaselton from Zootopia appear in Shanghai. Yeah. And this animatronic, um, it, it came out on the stage. It was pushing or it, it had like a cart and it was like, kind of like pushing like or skateboarding it was like on the, it kind yeah, of skateboarding like, yeah. on the side of the cart. And, and you know, you, you're, you're watching it and you're like, okay, that's cool. And and, you know, it looked really good. Like, like, you know, it had some pretty natural movement. And then um, this animatronic grabs like a little zip line and hops up on top of the cart and then has a conversation with Josh Diamaro. Yeah. And obviously, you know, it's it's staged and all and all that. And and it's in Chinese. So, you know, I couldn't really understand what <laughs> yeah. he was saying. There's also- but, I mean, I, I, I caught I caught certain things, but it was, uh, you know, th- the whole thing is, is that this animatronic, it was... It, it's pretty uh it, it's really impressive and um it looks like a real life version of what you would think the disney character looks like yeah. which you know you know the the potential for this you know we've talked about like the whole like like having droids like free roaming droids around the park and we've seen testing for that but you don't really think about things outside of robots like, like the animatronics, it's like, okay, you know, a droid is like, yeah, it's already a robot, you know, you know, that makes sense. But seeing, seeing like a character from a cartoon come to life like this is just, it's amazing. it's so, it's so crazy. And I don't think this would be a free roaming thing, but this makes for like, you know, you were talking about like the new Little Mermaid show and stuff like that. Like I could see this kind of tech being used in these stage shows. Oh yeah. Do some really impressive stuff, right? Well, I think the most impressive part about this, Trevor, and I think I said this to you when I sent you the video, was when he first pulls up on the string and then he steadies his feet on top of the platform. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like it's, it's freestanding. Yeah, he's he he's 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 hanging in the air and then he literally puts his feet down and steadies himself in a, in an extraordinarily natural way. Like and I just that was the part that got me. Like it was cool watching him just kind of like kick his way up, but like, you know, you could see that, you know, you could see that that's a thing they've had before, but to do the part where they pull him up like that and he re-steadies himself and he's just kind of like, you know, completely uh, free roaming and not like attached to anything. It's, it's just kind of amazing. It's, it's cool to watch. And I mean, like I, the whole bipedal robot thing is, is a, you know, it's, it's still pretty hard to do. We've, we've made a lot of advances in that area, but I mean, even some of the companies whose entire, uh, you know, entire existence is to make robots like this are are not. I feel like not as far as as some of the things they're, that Disney Research is doing. I mean, I mean, they're. I, I feel like they're. You know, they are coming along, but you're right. You know, you know, not not everybody has gotten this tech to the point where, it, and and it's not just like the advancement, but also to be able to use it in this kind of context. Like, yeah, exactly. like it's not. They're not just showing off a robot. They're showing off a character that it, you know it's th- the thing for me about this is that it, you know this goes back to the whole disney magic thing and and like you said you know when you first start watching the video you see it's like oh yeah you know he's pushing on the side of the car yeah okay um and okay for for anyone that's listening to this sorry this is going to get a little bit like breaking the magic but for me this is where it does get magical <laughs> is that you know when you, you know when you first see an animatronic or you, you know you see something that um uh, like even some of the ones that they've had in Epcot, like, like the Dr. Bunsen animatronic and stuff yeah. that, uh, that they used to do. It's like, you know, you first see it and you're like, oh, wow, that's, you know, you know, it's, it's that character, but then you kind of start to like, oh, I see what they did. Like, like, like I see how it's working. You, you, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I see, you know, you know, he's not actually pushing the cart, you know, the cart's moving on its own and he's just doing an animation. And, and so you're kind of looking at it and you're like, oh yeah, I see what they did. They attached him to the side of the cart and whatever. And then all of a sudden it's that, you know, hey, surprise, he jumps off the cart and it's like, oh, whoa, he's like, oh, like whoa. yeah, yeah, right. Like, like it's that it's that moment of like, wait a minute, this is this is not how this is supposed to happen. And that's where it becomes magical, right, is that, you know, you, yeah. you know, obviously we we love kind of picking it apart and not in a bad way, but like, you know, understanding what it is. But this is where this is where the magic comes in, is that, you know, when they really surprise you and it's like you see an effect that you didn't expect and, and, and especially the way they present it. Like it was so like casual. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was so, so casual. casual. Like, yep. You're like, yeah, he's just going across the, the, 
the stage and it's like, yeah, whatever. And it's like, oh, by the way, he's walking. And it's like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like how are you not amazed by that? Like, listen, I know yeah. it's getting more commonplace, right? But it's still amazing to see a untethered robot with no operators in sight, just walking across yeah. the stage casually and not looking like a robot. <laughs> Well, yeah, and and it's yeah, not that's the whole key is it's not looking like a robot. It's looking like Duke, Weas- Duke Weaselton. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, that's that that's not a robot of Duke Weaselton. It looks like Duke Weaselton. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's why I was blown away by I I like I mm-hmm. and Damon was like same old same old. I'm like, "What? Like where? <laughs> like what, where is this the same old same old?" Like I mean, it's just like, mind-blowing to me. Um Yeah. But yeah, the, anyway. The execution is is as much important like, you know, look, you know, just not looking at the technology, like it's it's how they execute these things, right? Like like the the fact that they they could have done 50 million things with that robot, but they chose to have him do the little zip line thing up onto yes. the top of the the cart. Like that that's such a cool way to to implement that, right? Yeah. Yeah, go find the video on the internet if you haven't seen it. By the way, go. I I can't really like link out to it, but just go find it. It's out there. Just search for Duke Weasley mm-hmm. animatronic. It's out there. Um, so I actually think I posted it in the group too. So yeah, uh, I think yeah, I think you did when it first came out. So yeah, yeah. And so we're we're at an hour and a half. I have the um foodie guide for uh farts uh festival of the arts. I mean, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay. Are you going to be there for Festival of the Arts? You're, you're yes. just missing it, right? Or no? No, no. We're going to be there for Festival of the Arts. Okay, Trevor. Yeah. I need this popcorn bucket. Okay, have you you seen the Figment popcorn bucket? Yeah. Right. Yes, I have. I um, must have the it. one that the. Okay, so um, <laughs> noted. I'll I'll see what I can do. Are you are you um, are you not in the same boat of must have this? <laughs> well, so so it's funny. My, I I I saw it and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like I I like it. Um, I showed my wife and her big thing. She was like, I can't really see figment because he's inside of the, uh, the yeah, imagination pavilion. I get that. But I'm like, I don't know. I think, Look I think that's cool really cool. Is. And, and, <laughs> and it took me a minute. I was, I was like, where, so, so this is the funny thing is that I was looking at this popcorn bucket and because it's like clear, clear, um, clear plastic. Yeah. I was like, where do you put the popcorn? Yeah, it was a little confusing. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. But then I realized that, oh, it's actually like inside, like inside. it's all going to pile up inside of the uh, inside of the pyramid. Which, that makes it even yeah, better to me, actually. And yeah, then selling it with multicolored popcorn, too, with rainbow popcorn. Yeah, with the rainbow. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, you know, I'll I'll be on the lookout for that for sure. You know, hopefully because I I won't be there right at the beginning of Festival of the Arts. I'm hoping that this, you know. Usually these things are pretty readily available. So yeah, hopefully um, this is going to be yeah, a popular so. one though. This is going to, that Figma popcorn bucket. Remember that? Oh yeah. Like, yeah I've got one of those. Yeah. I'm the, I, I mean, listen, this is going to, I feel like it's going to be on that level, man. Maybe they learned yeah. a lesson though. Maybe, you know, the supply chain stuff is not a problem anymore. Maybe they made a ton of these, I, which I hope so, they did because they really are up in the popcorn bucket game, man. Like this, this one is, I think my favorite one I've seen. Like so, I do know the last time we went, they so the popcorn buckets were available through mobile order. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, I think I don't know if they were exclusively through mobile order, but I know we were able to get popcorn buckets relatively easily because they limited them that way. That makes sense. So, yeah. so, so that's kind of the nice thing too is that if if it's you have to mobile order it and go get it. Um, you know, people that, like in the past, people that would snatch these up would, you know, show up with like, you know, four of their friends and, you know, do the two per customer thing, but walk away with, you know, 15 popcorn buckets. Right. Yeah. Um, I think because they're doing it through the app, it, it really forces people to like, no, you, you, you have to have multiple people signed up with like, it's harder to run multiple accounts that way. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping by the time we get there, this won't be that big of a deal or like it, like the hype will have died down because I found in the past, what happens is that you'll have the initial, like, you know, everybody's lining up for it and then it does fall off relatively quick, but they don't actually sell out. Like they are still readily available. So I will be, I will be on the lookout for one of these for you and, you know, I'll, I'll, Pick one up for myself, if, of course. If you can hook but, me up, I would be very, very pleased yeah, with that. I'll, I'll see what I can do. 
All right. Yeah. Well, and listen, there's a lot of cool food in here, but we are, I think yeah. we're probably at the limit for today. So, well, um, I mean, people were complaining that we, you know, that there wasn't enough content for the last couple of weeks. I saw that, Dan. I saw, I saw your we comment. Saw, we saw on, Dan. Yeah. We're not yeah, your we, content we, machine. Okay. We're, we're not, well, you but, know, we're not here for you to go dance, dance. Like, okay. We're not, <laughs> that's not us. Okay. We're but, not your side. But, but, <laughs> but we also haven't been here for a bit. So I think it's okay that we talked a little bit longer. It's, yeah, you yeah, know, you know, we needed to get back into the, the groove of things and there was a lot to cover. Like they, they did kind of drop a bunch of stuff here in the last, uh, last week. So, yeah. Yeah. So I listen, we can, we can always save the food talk for next week because mm-hmm. farts yeah. does not open until the 12th. So, uh, <laughs> so we'll be a little bit behind, but we can still talk about it. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I, my, and- my wife, every time I say farts to her, uh, referring to this, she just like, you're such a child. <laughs> She's just like I'm, whatever. It's it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it just makes me laugh. It's the festival yeah. of the arts. It's I mean, listen. It's the same reason why people like the abbreviation for alien swirling saucers. Okay, like mm-hmm. you know, it's there's some things like that at Disney that are funny like this, and I find festival of the arts I, to be one of I, them. <laughs> it's just amazing that nobody like thought about this along the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, because you could have like, done the like, Epcot Arts Festival, and then you don't have the farts problem. <laughs> yes, ex- yeah, exactly. Or, yeah. And same thing with alien swirling sauces. It's like you yeah. know, people are going to do acronyms of this stuff. Yes, of course. Like, <laughs> like look at the acronym for a minute. <laughs> let's let's just let's just look at this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry for my immaturity, everybody. I I, I am not a, a child. I just just on the I, inside. <laughs> I'm not going to apologize because it keeps. Keeps us young at heart. That's right. And that's, right. that's why we like Disney. So right. you just have to accept it. <laughs> yeah, just just deal with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, well, we could talk food next week, maybe if uh, yeah, if, if Damon lets us talk a little bit about food, about food, we can we can maybe do what we've been doing before, talking you know one or two dishes or whatever like that. But there's some really cool yeah. looking and, stuff at this festival. Well, and I want to talk about it. So and I want to go through it anyway because I oh, yeah. I'm actually going to be planning to try some of these things. So. Yeah, and I'm I'm assuming so. you're not going to have this gnocchi poutine, which is not really poutine because it's gnocchi. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'm I'm not really a, f- a gnocchi fan. No, I don't like. Oh man, <laughs> I don't know. It's, well, yeah, we, we, and, uh, we'll talk about we'll talk about food when we get yeah. closer to your trip. And we yeah, can, uh, it's yeah. Like I said, we, we yeah. I guess you know this is the thing is you know going into January here. I'm I'm going to be. As we get closer to the trip, I'll, you know, we'll go into it more detail. And yeah, part of it will be talking about Festival of the Arts. And I, uh, and actually, maybe this is the thing that I need to start planning for that I've been, you know, because I've been missing on something to plan. Is, well, you, uh, you got to download the app. You got to download the, yes, the, the yeah, actually, Festival app. Yeah. You're right. Actually, I haven't done that yet. I, I still have the app because I've never deleted it. I don't delete apps like that. Why would I? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I do need to go through and I need to start checklisting stuff with my uh, my wife and my son so that we can, you know, make sure we we eat what we want to eat while we're there. So so yeah, that'll be my that'll be my planning thing I guess here for the next uh month. <laughs> yeah, by the way, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, there is an app called WDW Food and Wine. Uh I don't know if it's available on iPhones, I'm assuming it is, but it is uh one of my favorite uh fan created apps out there because it tells you every single dish that's at each festival, the cost of each dish. It allows you to make a list. You can make a map. Like yep. it's, it's an excellent app. Absolutely. It, excellent. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic because there's so many things that you can sometimes forget what's there. And it, it's a great, like it's a great way to plan ahead and at least get like a checklist of things you want to do. So absolutely. Yeah, I, and yeah. they don't like sponsor the show. They got, they just got a free plug from us. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Highly recommend it because yeah, it's, it's a free app and it does exactly what it needs to do. <laughs> exactly. 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 Yeah. We actually too, and I'll, I'll, I'll give these guys a plug cause they actually reached out to us. And I, I don't know if you saw this, uh, Trevor, but, uh, there's a, uh, an app called theme park watch. Um, and they actually added us to their, uh, to their app. Without us even asking. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So I yeah, didn't know who they were. Yeah, it's it's actually a, it's it's a really good little app, and maybe we'll maybe we'll get them on one of these times and we could talk about it. But it's it's kind of it's um it's one of those apps where they you know just have a lot of uh, like inside information about like uh you know about about Disney stuff and Universal stuff and all the theme parks. Um. So and you know they 
yeah, they put us under the uh, under the uh, the resource uh, section. So we, we apparently are a resource for uh, for theme parks, uh, Trevor. I'm shocked by this. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're all in trouble. <laughs> we're, 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 we're a guide. We're, we're, we're under the guide section and then uh, under podcast. So uh, go look for us there. We're, we're there, uh, which is pretty, you know, it's, it's cool. It was nice of them to add us to the podcast, I mean, to, to their podcast yeah. list. Uh, I, I'm sure that they probably just went through, you know, different Disney related podcasts. Shh, and, Trevor, we're, yeah. no, listen, we're, we're special. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm sorry. I, I didn't consider it that way. <laughs> clearly, I mean, clearly, that is the actual answer. Listen, there's a there. Yeah. They do have a lot of Disney podcasts on there, but we are yeah. we are uh, on the in, closer to the top of the list. So that's you know that's nice too. Anyway, oh, good. Let's let's wrap this thing up. Let's let's yeah. let's wrap it up. Okay, so so outside of theme park watch, you can always find us um, by email at welcomehomepodcast at gmail dot com. So. You know, if you guys have your own trip reports, if you got questions you want on the show, stuff like that, you know, you can always find us on Gmail. Uh, we love hearing from you guys. And if you want to find us on uh, social media, you can uh, look for us on Facebook as Welcome Home Podcast. You can find us on YouTube as Welcome Home Podcast. And you can find us on Instagram as Welcome Home Picks. Uh, on Facebook, uh, we do have our Facebook group, which is called Welcome Home Disney Waitlist, which um, is another place that we love getting listener questions from. People will post memes in there. Uh, there's lots of great conversation about things that we talked about on the show, but also people just asking questions about Disney. And we have a lot of great listeners that are honestly more experts than we are in some areas of Disney that, uh, you know, will share information. So it's a great place to just go and talk about Disney if you're looking to fill that that need in your life or, you know, you've got, you've got a trip coming up, whatever, you know, just come check out our group. It, it's a good place to be on Facebook. Um, if you'd like to help support the show, you can go to store.welcomehomepodcast.com. You can check out our different uh, merch that we got there. There is t-shirts and mugs and all kinds of great stuff. Um, we do love, uh, you know, we do occasionally get people posting pics of, uh, you know, them wearing our shirts in the park, which is still crazy to me that uh, people will, We'll do that. Yeah, I, I don't feel like we're, uh, you know, I, I don't feel like we're a podcast. Sometimes I feel like we're just hanging out and talking, but you yeah. know, it's great to see, see people, you know, supporting the show like that. So, you know, if you, if you'd like to support the show, that is one way to do it. We also have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash welcome home pod. Um, you know, it's another place that people will support the show. Patreon does have uh, exclusive Patreon logo merchandise that you can get on there. And uh, anybody who supports us through Patreon also gets access to the Discord server, which is yet another place that we talk with people. It's, um, you know, you know, a lot of great conversations go on there as well that, uh, um, you know, people share their own experiences. And it's a lot of a uh, lot more um, intimate conversation, I think, than than a lot of other platforms, because, yeah, it's just I don't know, it's just how Discord is. It's, it's uh, you know, a lot. Um, it's it's more like an old school forum i shouldn't say it's a forum yeah Maybe no, I'm dating I mean, it myself. is yeah 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 but yeah so you know if, if you're interested in that you know please check us out on on patreon um also if you are listening on itunes or spotify or any of those services where you can uh rate or leave reviews you know please leave us a five-star review it does help more people find the show and uh, on itunes if you do happen to uh leave us a review you know you, you can you can do a written review we do uh like reading those we do read them out on the show and we love hearing what people think about the show. So, you know, you know, please leave us a review if uh, if you'd like to if you'd like to let us know. And, you know, maybe you'll get it read at the end of the show. I'm, yeah. I'm sure we don't have any over Christmas, though, because, yeah, uh, you know, everybody was, you know, I doing we do. doing family stuff. People yeah. were doing that whole, you know, holiday thing where I, I mean, I don't even know if people were listening over the holidays. Right. Because I know I didn't listen to any of my normal podcasts uh, over the holidays. Um, yeah. But, you know, if. If you, yeah, I don't think we have I, any recent ones. Actually, so, so, sorry, re real quick, fu funny enough, I actually, I started listening to a podcast, or so this is Disney related. Um, there, there is a podcast called Wizards of Waverly Pod. Okay. Which is hosted by, um, Jennifer Stone and David DeLuise. Jennifer played, um, uh, Harper on Wizards, and David was, uh, the dad. Um, can I remember the dad's name? I'm, I'm I don't know. I never watched that, so I don't know. 
<laughs> but but so so it's Wiver, Wizards of Waverly Place, which had Selena Gomez and, and all that, and, and so that they have like they've had Selena on the show and everything. But it's funny, like like you're saying, you know, over Christmas, like I wasn't listening to any of my normal stuff, but then I found this one, and I kind of went through their backlog a little bit, and I was like, oh hey, they you know they they've done like interviews with different uh, Disney Channel cast people and you know you know everyone talked about their experiences and stuff so because i wasn't listening to my old stuff i actually found something new to and it's now become part of my regular stuff so yeah <laughs> yeah no, and, I, yeah I, check that out if you're wanting you know some disney stuff to, right. to listen to yeah yeah okay nice uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to Welcome Home Podcast so you can be reminded every time we release an episode. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, YouTube Music, just about any place you can find podcasts, you can find us. Uh, just a reminder to our listeners, Welcome Home Podcast is for entertainment only. We are not employed by the Walt Disney Company, and as such, all opinions we express in the show are our own. So please consult a Disney cast member or a DVC cast member for more information about anything we talked about today. Join us next time for more Disney Parks discussion, of course, more DVC talk. We hope to see you all real soon. This is Skipper Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, signing off from Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. Do a hunt when we hit a chair. How she can cuddle is no man's affair. I looked around from pole to pole, found her in a sugar bowl.